Hey, how's it going everyone? Uh, good afternoon. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. And we're just going to get right into it and talk about the two games that were on last night to see if anyone won or advanced the World Series. So we're going to start off with the Braves and Dodgers. The Braves were coming into this one with a 3-2 series lead, uh, threatening to go to the World Series with one more win. So the starters for this game was uh, Max Fried for the Braves and uh, Walker Bueller for the Dodgers. So it started off with um, Seager being absolutely still hot with the bat for the Dodgers. And he started off with a solo shot, made it one nothing, And that was his sixth of the postseason and fifth of this series. So he's picking up at the right time. And uh, right after him, Justin Turner for the Dodgers made it 2 nothing with another solo shot. So the Braves were getting away with the home runs early, but they were solo shots. So um, it wasn't hurting them early on, but it went on too. So Cody Bellinger, he came up and made it 3 nothing with a RBI single, knocked in the runner from third. And the Dodgers were out hot again. I actually checked my notification and it said that the Dodgers hit back-to-back home runs. So... It was, again, off to a bad start for the Braves, and they're coming really close to blowing the series, which is not going to be good for them because they they were on fire for the first three, four games of the series, and it's not good to see them blow this lead. <laughs> it's it's pr- probably pretty nerve-wracking for Braves fans. So um, Walker Bueller was really dominant. He was um, getting to 0-2 counts a lot, and he was striking out everyone so he actually was in a bases loaded jam early and he got out of it uh, struck out the side which is if you got a guy on third and there's no outs you pretty much guarantee that that runs getting in at some point somehow so after that uh, Mookie Betts made a great catch out in right field uh, in any other stadium that would have been a robbed home run but he uh, just shows off his last athleticism and it really shows why the Dodgers paid him the money that they did, which I think any team, if they had the financial flexibility of the Dodgers, they would have jumped at it too. So uh, Blake Trinan came in and relieved Bueller, came in and he gave up a uh, RBI double to Ronald Acuna and he knocked a run in, so 3-1. The Braves were trying to claw back in. And again, they weren't ever really out of this game. It just seemed like their bats went really silent. Again, against Bueller, he kept them silent. He got into strikeout counts and um, really went for the kill on this one. And I think they would have used every arm in their bullpen to force a Game 7 if they had to. So it wasn't very eventful to be on there. It was pretty straightforward. Kenley Jansen came in, um, closes out, got the save, and the Dodgers forced a Game 7. So tonight we're going to see if LA is going to go to a third World Series in the last uh, since 2017, or if the Braves are going to go to their first one in over 20 years. So we'll move on to the Astros and Rays. Uh, Astros came back from 3 0 down in the series, and now we're seeing a game seven here. So the Astros threw out uh, Lance McCullers Jr., um, not their ace by any means, but uh, Charlie Morton was in. For the Rays, Uh, again, former Astro. Be a good story for him to close it out against his old team. So, uh, Michael Brantley came into this game with an 11 game hit streak, and he made that 12 after he hit one into the gap tonight. So, Brantley showing off why, even though he's not hitting homers or anything in the playoffs, he's showing up by getting a hit every single night, and 11 games back, you think that's the beginning of the playoffs. So, uh, Randy Rosarena hit a two-run shot, made it 2 nothing, and he actually set the record for the most home runs by a rookie in a single postseason, and he actually beat out his former, uh, well, it wasn't his teammate ever, but Evan Longoria, who was on the Tampa Bay Rays, and he held that record before him as a rookie, and be, uh, also Kyle Schwarber of the Cubs had that as a rookie, so... He's among pretty good company, and it's actually, to me, pretty big coincidence that it was someone within the organization he plays for that held the record. So the Rays infield was, again, showing off their uh, defense with uh, Willie Adamas. He, again, 
no stranger to making great plays, but he made a terrific spinning play from short and uh, just shows off that the Rays value defense and that it comes up when you need it the most. And next, uh, Mike Zanino again. He's been big in these playoffs. Um, a lot of people, including me, didn't think much of him, but he uh, got on the board, made it 3 nothing with a home run. And Charlie Morton was doing his job in the pitching department for the Rays. He actually retired 14 straight batters uh, via strikeout or any other means. Um, he was doing great showing off why just because you don't have the same velocity or anything, he can still get the job done in a Game 7 situation. Because he, if, if you had to pick who your Game 7 starter was going to be, I don't know if they were always going with Morton or if it was going to be their top guys. And, and by no means is he not a top guy. So uh, I want to talk about what I saw from uh, G-Man Choi, who it was only 3 nothing at that point, but um, uh, Joey Wendell caught a ball on a hop and threw it to Choi at first, and what Choi did prevented the runner from actually being able to advance on a bad throw. So it looked, if it was a subpar first baseman that was sitting there, it would have been definitely like gone by him and the run, maybe one or two runs would have scored. So this could have been a spot where the game changed, but because of um, the first baseman, Choi, he caught the ball on kind of basket caught it. It hit him, but he kept it in front of him, like blocked like how a catcher does. So I was impressed with that, and that was just a um, being in game seven, you're going to see these moments that define it, and I think that was one of the smaller moments that maybe not everyone noticed, but it was a really good important moment for the Rays. So um, Nick Anderson came in and um, he relieved Morton, came in, did his job, got a couple outs, and again uh, Mike Zanino hit a sack fly for nothing so he again contributed even though he got an out he contributed. And uh, Kyle Fairbanks came in, they're one of their uh, late relief pitchers but he came in in the closer role he came in, uh, Carlos Correa got a two RBI double off him, so that brought it to four to two. So game came right down to the wire, and you're thinking, uh, look back to that joy play, it could have been maybe four four if he didn't make that. So Fairbanks has a little bit of slack here. So Fairbanks came in, uh, bottom of the ninth, and or pardon me, top of the ninth. He struck out the first two batters that he faced, and then he popped him up, and that was it. So with that the Tampa Bay Rays are going to the World Series for the second time in franchise history and the second time since 2008 and or the first time since 2008 and that year they went they lost to the eventual World Series champions the Philadelphia Phillies that year and so it'll be interesting to see tonight's game will dictate who they're going to be seeing in the World Series if it's going to be the Dodgers or the Braves um, I think personally I would like to see the Braves team go but they have a lot of time with their youth to be able to accomplish that I think the baseball world is saying the Dodgers have to do it and um, I wouldn't put the Rays not winning it I mean from what they've done who they've beat beating the Astros um, and even not foiling over when the pressure was there um, blowing that three nothing seriously but getting it done it just shows that they they can do it and it's going to be interesting whoever makes it. So watch tonight. Uh, whoever's going to be watching, it's going to be a great game. Um, they're going to be using every arm that they have. Probably going to see some starters put in there in bullpen rolls. So I think it's a worthwhile game to watch for everyone. So um, two pieces of NHL news that we have today. Not much on the board for that. Um, we have uh, just, a, just a little piece about Kasperi Kapanen. So um, Toronto traded him over. Back to the Pittsburgh Penguins, the team he was drafted in 2014. Um, a few months ago, he was sent there again. So there's um, some people saying, and uh, uh, Mike Sullivan, for the coach of the Penguins, saying that he may actually be starting the season or the preseason on a line with Crosby and Jake Gensel. So the thing is, when seeing him play in Toronto for as long as he did, and I think a lot of people can agree with me that. He, he was given those opportunities. He played with Tavares. He played with Matthews and Marner and Nylander. And he would show games of, you know, he, he sometimes he scored the overtime winner. Sometimes he would uh, show up big in the playoffs on those lines. But 
when he was given long-term opportunities on them, it just seemed like he couldn't capitalize on those. So, and I'm not going to say that he can't succeed. It could have just been the pressure cooker of Toronto. I've seen, and I'm sure everyone watches who's ever seen Sidney Crosby play, he's been able to get someone on his line that you wouldn't think would succeed, maybe get 60, 70 points, and they get career highs. So he might be able to find a way to succeed in Pittsburgh with Crosby being who he is. So the last piece of news here for today, unless something else comes up after, um, Matt Grizzlick of the Boston Bruins defenseman just signed four years, $14.75 million. So he's a good puck-moving top four. I've seen him a lot, obviously, because he's in – uh, the Eastern Conference and our division playoff matchups. He's always been there. So, again, not much else on tonight besides Game 7 of the NLCS. And I hope everyone enjoys that game. I know I'm going to be. And we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I have some things in the works, uh, a couple ideas from a few different people. So, um, over the next week, I'll, I'll continue be doing the World Series. And I'll be having a few other things coming out. So... Thanks for watching, and again, thank you for anyone who subscribed, liked, commented, and uh, please continue to do so. Really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Enjoy the game tonight.